Good morning. Great to see everybody here today. Uh, great to be so close to you when I speak to you this morning. It's always nice to be able to see your faces and, and speak with you about God's Word. We're really glad that you're here today. Glad also for those who are with us online. And of course, we're very excited uh, for Vacation Bible School tonight and looking forward to what God can do with our efforts this evening. So glad that you're here. Today we are wrapping up our series in the book of Joshua, and I really have one verse in particular that I want us to really hone in on this morning, and it comes from Joshua chapter 23, if you'd like to get out a Bible and be turning there. Joshua 23, of course this is near the end of the life of the man Joshua who was leading Israel. And when Joshua's life was coming to an end, one of the things that he said to the next generation that was going to come after him was this. He said, be very careful to love the Lord your God. Now, what do you think that Joshua meant by that? Be very careful to love the Lord your God. Very careful is what Joshua says. Now, careful is a really important word to the book of Joshua. You may have kind of picked up on this by now as we've been going through the series in Joshua. In fact, some of you may even remember uh, that when, at the very beginning of Joshua, when God, like a, like a great coach, was getting Joshua ready to, to take the field and to go into the promised land and begin to do this work that uh, he'd been called to do, uh, when God was getting Joshua ready, he gave them this charge, this message and it included three things. And one of those three things was, was a word about being careful. The three things that he said way back in Joshua chapter 1 were, Be courageous, I am with you, and be careful. What he said was, Be careful to obey all the law that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you you go. Be careful. That's what the Lord said to Joshua. And sometimes they were. Israel, sometimes they were careful. Like at the battle of Jericho when they followed what the Lord had said and they didn't go to the right or to the left of what God had said and they were careful to obey everything that the Lord had said and they won that great victory through their faithful obedience to the Lord. Israel was careful. Sometimes they were. Other times, they were not. And the difference, whether they were or whether they were not careful, really is a big thing in Joshua. So maybe in that way, it's no surprise that when Joshua is nearing the end of his life, one more time, he's going to say to them, be careful, like all those times before. But you know, I, I got to looking at this verse, and I, I started thinking, Maybe this is not exactly like all those times before. Maybe what Joshua is saying is an even more important thing. In fact, what he says here, although he was told many times to be careful, what Joshua says here is actually be very careful. Sometimes we make a point about that word. You remember uh, in the book of Genesis when God created the heavens and the earth, and we go through all the days of creation. You remember that pattern you see in that chapter. Uh, God looked at everything that he had made, and God saw what? That it was, it was good. Day after day, it was good. It was good. And then you get to the sixth day, the, the, the last day that he creates things, and, and, and God creates human beings uh, in the image of God. And, and after all those days of saying it was good, it was good, what does God say on the sixth day? He looked at all that he'd see, done, and he saw that it was very good. Like even more good, like an intensification of what it means to be good. Very good is what he said. Well, here we have this book that all along has been saying, be careful, be careful, be careful. And now we get to the end, and Joshua says more than that. He says, be very careful about this. Even more careful about this. Only two times in this whole book do we find this phrase, be very careful. And both times, it's about the same thing. Both times, it's about love. Joshua says, be very careful to love 
That's what he says. To love the Lord your God. And the only other time that phrase is used, be very careful about this, it comes one chapter before, and it's about the same thing. Uh, chapter 22, Joshua, again, is getting near to the end of his life, and he has some things he wants to say. And there, in chapter 22, he says, be very careful to keep the commandment. Like this one commandment of the law, and as we read what it is, we find that it's that great commandment. The one that Hans read from Deuteronomy, the love commandment. Be very careful to love the Lord your God is what he says, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. So in both cases, when, when Joshua at the end of his life wants to say, you got to be very careful about this, in both cases, it's about love. He's saying to love the Lord your God. And in fact, out of the whole book of Joshua, the word love is only used twice. It's not a very lovey book. But in fact, both times that it's used, it is to say, be very careful that you do this. Be very careful that you love. Why would Joshua say that? Why emphasize it so strongly? I've actually puzzled over this a lot this week because... Frankly, I'm not in the habit of thinking about love as something I need to be careful to do. I'm careful to pay my bills. I'm careful to hold my tongue when I'm around somebody who brings out an angrier side of me. Uh, I'm careful to blow out the candles at night and make sure all the doors are locked. You know, I'm careful uh, to not wake the sleeping baby in the room next door. I'm very careful about that, actually. <laughs> I'm careful about a lot of things. But when I hold that baby in my arms, I don't usually think to myself, boy, I need to be really careful to love this baby. I don't think like that. Be careful to? What am I, am I going to forget? It, am I going to take it for granted, get distracted? There are moments in life when that feels like an impossibility. How could I possibly? And yet, if there's one thing that I've heard a thousand times these past few months, it's been people coming out of their way to come up to me and say, don't forget, don't take it for granted, don't get distracted. Is it a possibility? Is being careful to love actually a necessity? I watched a show recently about someone who kind of reminds me of this. It was a show about someone uh, trying to break into show business in the 1960s and, and the terrible time that this woman has finding her big break uh, to really make it in the, the performance world. But she wanted it. Oh, she wanted it so badly. She'd do anything to be a star. She said, I want a big life. I want to experience everything. This is what she said. That They say ambition is an unattractive trait. Maybe, but you know what's really unattractive is waiting for something to happen. Starting, staring out a window and thinking of the life that you should be living. It's out there somewhere, but not being willing to open up the door and get it. Being a coward is only cute in the Wizard of Oz, is what she says. She would have given anything. And so she did. And the whole entire show is about this great clawing climb to go from a performer in obscurity to this person who gets her one big break. This make your career moment. The moment when you go from nobody to someone destined to be a star. And it finally happens. The whole show is about getting that one break and it finally happens. There's three minutes left in the show. And in those three minutes, it flashes forward 30 years. The girl has grown up to be as famous as Elvis, or just about. She's in her Upper West Side Manhattan apartment. The view out the window from her apartment is like the postcard you'd send home. A Central Park in the fall, greetings from New York. She's got a table, dining room table. Stretches out like a limousine. Fills the whole room. And she sits down to eat at the table. And a very well-dressed man brings a plate of food on fine china and sets it down before her and then leaves the room. 
and she sits down and she eats. And then a song plays. It's an old Barbara Streisand song. I had to look that up. I don't just know old Barbara Streisand songs. But it was easy to look up because the, the, the line in the song was the same thing over and over. I wanted the music to play on forever. Have I stayed too long at the fair? I wanted the clown to be constantly clever. Have I stayed too long at the fair? I bought me blue ribbons to tie up my hair, but I couldn't find anybody to care. The merry-go-round is beginning to slow now. Have I stayed too long at the fair? The music has stopped and the children must go now. Have I stayed too long? at the fair, and that song plays, and she sits there at the dinner table, and she thinks about her kids and her ex-husband, and tomorrow she's going to be playing for a sold-out show, but tonight she's eating dinner at a very big, very expensive, empty table. And when I really, really thought about this verse and what it's saying, I thought maybe that's what it's saying. It is possible to forget to love even as you conquer the world. When Joshua stands before the Israelites in, in, in Joshua chapter 23, they, he stands before a group of conquerors. They've done great things. They've lived big lives. Their experiences have broadened. And yet the thing that he says, be very careful not to miss this, to that group is love the Lord your God because it is possible. As hard as it may be in some moments to imagine, it is possible to forget to love. It's possible to take the people we love or even the God that we love for granted. But love is not a thing to be taken for granted. Paul said, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, if I have faith that moves mountains, if I give away everything I have, even give my own life sacrificially, if I do all these great magnificent things, but I do not have love. I'm noisy and unproductive and not as significant as everybody thought I was looking at me. Because love is not a thing to be taken for granted. John says, or you could say Jesus says in the book of Revelation, in one of those letters that's written to the churches that we studied on Sunday mornings here recently, Jesus says to one of the congregations in Ephesus, he says, I know your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance. He has a lot of great things to say about them, all these things that they did quite well. But then he says, you forgot, you've forsaken the love that you had at first. As if to say that, that part, you can't lose it. Because love is not something to be taken for granted. And when Jesus was confronted by a teacher of the law with a question, Mark chapter 12, and, and he comes up and he says to them, which one of the commandments is the most important one of all? You remember what Jesus said. I, I won't give you one, I'll give you two. The most important one, said Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And this one, the second one. Love your neighbor as yourself. There are no greater commandments than these. And when that man said to Jesus, well said, those two commandments are actually more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices, Jesus said to him, you're not far off from the kingdom of God. Why was he so near to the kingdom? Because in all of the other things that call out for our attention, he was putting love first. It was the highest of all. He was not taking love for granted. You might say he was being very careful about it. Careful to love 
the Lord your God. And we ought to be the same way. Over the past few weeks in Joshua, we've been considering a lot of different things about what it means for us to choose this day whom we're going to serve, as Joshua says in the ending chapter of this book. We talked about some of the core convictions that we hold uh, in our church's past and in our future. We've talked about communion, about baptism. We've talked about the scriptures. These are things that have defined our past and they must define our future. But nothing at all is more important than love. And there are many things in life to be careful about. But there's nothing that we should be more careful about than to love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus says matters most. And it sounds so basic, we may feel like we don't even need to hear it. But do we? Do we need to hear it? I only ask because it would be a shame to get on down the road of our lives and spend our lives carefully doing a lot of things, even conquering the world with great success, only to wonder sometime down the road, Did I stay too long at the fair? Did I, in all that I did or didn't do, did I forget to love? When I get to the end of my life, I don't want to ask that question. I want to know. And when we get down the road to who we're going to be as a church, years down the line from here, I don't want to ask that question either. I want to know. That of all the things we were careful to do, we were most careful, most determined to love the Lord our God and love our neighbor as ourselves and love one another as God's church. Maybe that's something you need to hear today. Maybe that's something we can keep in our minds tonight as our pews are filled with children some of whom are part of this College Hill family and many of whom are friends and family and neighbors of our kids and of you. No matter what we do tonight, we'll do our best to teach them. We'll do our best to have some fun. We'll probably, at the end of the week, tell each other stories of the things that went well and some of the things that didn't go well. Usually that's how it happens. But I hope at the end of this week we're saying to each other, we were very careful to love this week. We showed the people who came through our doors that we love God. We love them too. And when you're here, you're a part of a place that, is, that treats love like the most important thing of all. Maybe somebody needs to respond to the gospel today, which is, of course, the story of love, God's love for you, and how God loved us so much that he gave his own son to die for our sins, take those sins upon himself so that we might be free and that we might enjoy his love forever at his table and share in his family. If somebody needs to respond to that today, that hope, if you need to be baptized into Christ this morning, Give a chance to respond while we stand, while we sing.